Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll review the regulation of the heart rate. In the previous podcast, we have learned that heart rate and stroke volume directly influence cardiac output. Our bodies are dynamic and always changing, as is the cardiac output. It is never static. It's always increasing and decreasing as our body's activities change. During exercise, cardiac output increases in order to meet the higher oxygen and nutrient demands of tissue cells. In order to maintain cardiac output in a normal range, there are various homeostatic mechanisms that make adjustments to heart rate and contractility. The most vital of these mechanisms are the autonomic nervous system and endocrine hormones, such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, released by the adrenal gland. The neuroregulation of heart rate is primarily the job of the cardiovascular center, located in the medulla oblongata of the brainstem. Acting as the major control center of the cardiovascular system, its primary job is to regulate heart rate and force of contraction. It receives input from higher brain centers, such as the cerebral cortex, the limbic system, and the hypothalamus, as well as a diverse collection of sensory receptors. The cardiovascular center processes this input and sends output to the heart through nerve impulses in the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic branch is known as the fight or flight branch, while the parasympathetic branch is nicknamed the rest and digest branch. The sympathetic impulses increase heart rate and force of contraction, while the parasympathetic impulses decrease heart rate and force of contraction. There are three main types of sensory receptors that provide input through nerve impulses to the cardiovascular center the proprioceptors, the chemoreceptors, and the baroreceptors. Proprioceptors monitor the positions of the arms and legs and muscles and are able to detect body movements through changes in muscle tension. As physical activity begins, proprioceptors send lots of input to the cardiovascular center, resulting in a sudden rise in heart rate. The chemoreceptors are able to detect changes in blood chemistry, in particular changes in blood pH. The baroreceptors detect blood pressure changes due to changes in blood flow in the arteries and veins. Some of the most important strategically placed baroreceptors are found in the arch of the aorta and in the carotid arteries both acting as major blood pressure monitors as blood begins flowing through the systemic circulation. The output sent from the cardiovascular center directly influences sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system that innervate the heart. In the sympathetic branch, neurons originating from the cardiovascular center pass into the spinal cord and are then distributed to the heart. Cardiac accelerator nerves branch from the thoracic region of the spinal cord and innervate the SA node, the heart's pacemaker, the AV node, and most of the heart's cardiac muscle fibers. These nerves send out impulses that stimulate the release of norepinephrine, which binds to receptors on cardiac muscle fibers. In the SA and AV node fibers, norepinephrine stimulates the rapid production of action potentials, which leads to an increase in heart rate. In the atrial and ventricular contractile fibers, norepinephrine also increases calcium ion flow into the fibers, which increases the strength of contraction and, as a result, stroke volume. In the parasympathetic branch, The vagus nerves, which is cranial nerve 10, sends impulses to the heart, in particular the SA and AV nodes, along with the atrial myocardium. 
These nerves decrease the rate of action potentials generated by the two nodes and decrease heart rate. The vagus nerves don't have much effect on the force of ventricular contraction since they only minimally innervate the ventricles. There are a variety of chemicals that play roles in regulation of the heart rate to help maintain a normal cardiac output. Heart activity decreases when oxygen level decreases during hypoxia, as well as when pH is too low, as in acidosis, or too high during alkalosis. Endocrine hormones that affect the heart include epinephrine and norepinephrine, released from the adrenal medulla in the adrenal gland during periods of excitement, stress, or exercise. They are strong stimulators of cardiac activity that increase heart rate and force of contraction. The thyroid hormones released from the thyroid gland perform the same function. In fact, tachycardia, a high resting heart rate, is a sign of hyperthyroidism, a production of too much thyroid hormone. The concentrations of three cations potassium, calcium, and sodium have a significant effect on heart function. If sodium or potassium ion concentration in the blood is too high, heart rate and strength of contraction will decrease. This happens because too much sodium ion interferes with the flow of calcium ions into muscle fibers during the cardiac muscle action potential. Too much potassium ion inhibits the production of the action potential. An increase in calcium ion concentration in the interstitial fluid increases heart rate and strength of contraction. Other factors that affect heart rate include age, where heart rate slowly declines from infancy through adulthood, but then rises again in the elderly. An infant typically has a resting heart rate over 120 beats per minute. Gender. Females often have a slightly higher resting heart rate than males. Physical fitness. A fit athlete like a distance runner often has a more efficient low resting heart rate of around 50 beats per minute. This is called bradycardia. Elevated body temperature during fever or intense exercise will increase heart rate, while a drop in body temperature will lower heart rate and strength of contraction. Stress and anxiety will increase heart rate.